Well, good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to our online video service today. Uh, really lovely to see you, thank you for coming. My name is Martine Oborn, I'm the vicar at St Michael's Church in Chiswick and um, today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. That means that this is the very last Sunday before Christmas. I hope you're feeling really excited about Christmas um, and you're all ready to celebrate. I hope you've made some plans uh, to do some nice things, um, but also at the same time keeping yourself safe. Um, so we've got a lovely service. We have our choir, we have the band, we have lovely reading. Um, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Christmas story um, from the point of view of Mary, very important part of the Christmas story. So let's pray before we begin. Lord, uh, it's wonderful that we can join together to uh, worship you, to give thanks, um, to meet in your name. And Lord, we just ask for the blessing of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading is taken from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O God. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name is Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. 
And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, who will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, thank you, Edie. Um, so, I'm another character in the Christmas story. I'm wearing blue. Who am I? I think you know. Yes, I'm Mary. Um, and I'm going to be talking about my part in the Christmas story, Mary's part. Uh, but before I do that, I want to tell um, you another story. Now, I know you know this story. Um, it's the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now, I've got it here. Goldilocks rabbit, and I've got um, three bears. I've got um, daddy bear, and mummy bear, and baby bear. Now, you know the story. Um, here's Goldilocks rabbit, and she is wandering through the forest. She comes to a little cottage, she goes inside, and uh, she sees three bowls of porridge, um, and she's really hungry. So she thinks, hmm, I haven't had my breakfast. I think I'll have a little bit of this porridge. She tries one bowl, and that's um, Daddy Bear's bowl, and that's much too hot. Oh, she can't eat that. And so then she tries Mummy Bear's uh, porridge, <clears throat> and that's too cold. It's disgusting. Uh, and then she tries the third bowl of porridge, and that is uh, Baby Bear's porridge. And... Um, that porridge is just right, it's delicious. And she eats it all up. And um, you know how the story goes. Now, I just want you to think about that story and what would happen if one of the characters in the story was missing. Supposing we don't have Baby Bear. Supposing we just have uh, Goldilocks and Daddy Bear and Mummy Bear. So in this story, uh, Goldilocks goes into the cottage. There are only two bowls of porridge. One's too hot, ow, and one's too cold, ah, oh, disgusting. And there's no third one because there's no baby bear. So what does Goldilocks do? Well, she's very sad, she's very hungry, and she probably just wanders off. It kind of ruins the whole story. So I don't know what your favourite story is, but maybe tonight when you're in bed, um, mummy or daddy are reading you a story, I just think about what it would be like, this story, if one of the characters was missing. And it's the same thing for the Christmas story. Everyone in the Christmas story has a really important part to play. We've thought about the angels. Um, if we didn't have the angels, we wouldn't have heard the message that um, Jesus was going to be a saviour, that he would grow up to save people from all the bad things in the world. And uh, if we didn't have the shepherds, we wouldn't know about the upside down world, uh, the kingdom of God that uh, Jesus came to bring in, where the poorest people were the most important, people like the shepherds. Um, if we didn't have Joseph, then Jesus would have had no one to help Mary bring him up. He wouldn't have taught Jesus how to be a carpenter. Um, if we didn't have um, Herod, we're going to have Herod next week. Um, he is an evil character 
and he wants to kill Jesus, but we need him in the story because he shows us um, that God isn't going to force us to do things his way. We always have a choice to do, go our own way in life. So we need Herod in the story. We need the wise men, the wise men who come from all over the world, from lands afar, and they show us that this good news about Jesus isn't just for a special group, it's for absolutely everyone, whoever you are, it's, it's for you, this good news. So all these um, characters are really important. And of course, Mary, Mary is so important because she's Jesus' mother. Jesus wouldn't have been born without her. So uh, she has such an important part to play. Um, and we're looking at that today, Mary's part, and my part in that story. So let me quickly tell you my story. I was um, home uh, a couple of days ago. I, I was reading my Bible. I was saying my prayers. And suddenly this angel appeared and it was scary. I was terrified. Uh, but the angel said, don't be afraid, Mary, uh, because God loves you. And he's got a plan and he wants you to play an important part in his plan. And uh, the angel explained to me that uh, God wanted me to have this special baby, to call him Jesus, which means God saves. And, um, well, I was really shocked. Um, I'm not even married yet and not ready to have a baby. So um, I was scared at what the angel was saying. But the angel... Um, told me that God loved me and he was going to help me. And so I thought about it and I said, yes. I said, yes. I said, here I am. Let it be the way God wants it to be. So that's my story. That's Mary's story. She was willing to play uh, her part in God's story. And the question today is, are you willing to play your part in God's story? Because in God's, God's story continues. Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still working to make the world the way God wants it to be and calling us to help him to do that. And we all have a part to play. We're all absolutely vital to the story. And uh, if we're more like Mary, if we're reading our Bibles, if we're praying, if we're listening to God, if we're quiet enough, then we will hear God call us and tell us, what is our part in that story? So that's my prayer for you today, that you'll be like Mary, that you will listen to God and you will be willing, like Mary was, to say yes, to say here I am. I'm willing to do the thing that you want me to do, uh, to make the world the way you want it, Lord. And um, God has put us in the story for a particular reason. He's put us in this particular family, in this friendship group, in this work situation, in this place, in this time, even in 2020, perhaps especially in 2020, because we have a part to play. We have a role to play in his story. And the story will not be the same if we're not all playing our part. So let's pray. Um, Lord, Thank you for Mary and thank you for the Christmas story. Um, it's a busy time of year. We've all got lots to do. There's still many things to do, but help us to take some time. Help us to take some time at the beginning of every day to be quiet, uh, not to be looking at our phones, not to be listening to a podcast or playing around, but to have a little bit of quiet time where we listen to God and hear what God wants us to do uh, each day and every day uh, to be our part in his story. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're, we're going to continue in prayer now. Dear Lord, it's only five days till Christmas. So we remember Mary as she travelled on the donkey towards Bethlehem, not knowing where she would give birth, so far from home. She must have been scared of the responsibility of carrying the baby Jesus, but she trusted in God to look after her and her baby. 
We ask you, Lord, to look after us as we plan our Christmas celebrations this year. Help us to remember Mary and her faith and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This year we know we won't see our families and friends in the same way, and this will be hard. We pray that you protect everyone and help them to have a happy Christmas. Just as Mary cared for the baby Jesus, we thank you for all the people who care for patients in hospitals and old people's homes, and all the scientists developing the vaccines. Please keep our loved ones safe and happy this Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also remember everyone in our area who has helped someone else during the pandemic. Maybe, maybe helping with the food bank or donating presents to people in need. Help us to be a good neighbour and also to remember those who are not as lucky as we are. And above all, to be kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. There are many people who are in hospital or who are ill or who have lost someone they love. Please look after them. We especially remember Jenny Figaro, Christopher Golis, Vivian Golis, Evelyn Hanna, Pete Jadhav, Anna Lee, Eloise Liebrand, Eureka Lewin, Joan Martinez, Lisa and Ray Mo Muller, Betty Seaman, Edwina Turner, Diane Batten, Martha and Ezra Prescott, and all the children at Hope Primary School in Bulawayo. Dear God, please look after all these and all your people, just as you look up, looked after Mary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, thank you, Hansel and the band. That was really fabulous. Uh, we're coming to the end of our service now. Just to say uh, thank you again for coming. I hope that you'll join us uh, this evening. It's the last of our carol sessions under the magnolia tree. And this week we have a very special visitor. Father Christmas is coming and he's got a little gift for children. So I do hope you'll be able to join us for that. 
starts very promptly at 6, so do get there just before 6 and we finish at 6.30. Um, join us again on Christmas Day morning if you can. Uh, if you can't actually get to the service, um, then you can join us on Zoom or on YouTube. Um, join me for coffee and catch up after the service and uh, I hope to see you all soon. Let's have our final blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for coming. And if you've enjoyed the service today, then please do share it with someone else. And uh, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please uh, visit and like our Facebook page and sign up to our mailing list to make sure you know what's going on at St Michael's. Also, you can subscribe to my blog. Uh, I hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Bye bye.